Games Workshop have announced a new season of Warhammer 40k, and this looks to be the vehicle by which Games Workshop ends 9th edition Warhammer and ushers us into Warhammer 10th edition. Although, admittedly, the attendant doing the ushering is Shia LaBeouf, and he's wielding an axe because this new season looks to be incredibly predatory, much worse than I imagined possible. This is the Ark of the Winds! It was announced last week and it is big and it is hip and it is new lore and new chaos stories about them going pew pew on the Imperium. Yeah. The Warhammer 40k setting is moving forward in the timeline through a new series of books. Yes! Finally! New Warhammer books! That's what I've been waiting on! Oh, by the way, I was being sarcastic. And of course, this is how the Games Workshop season model works, right? Yes, the season model is basically the latest in GW's predatory practices Infinity Stone collection. Slotted nicely in there between limited time offers and rotating store. But not even I saw just how predatory the Games Workshop would get and how far beyond reason they would push the season model. The Ark of Omens is pretty shocking, I'm going to be honest. So aside from the new lore and the new narrative, what really is this thing about and why is it so bad? Well, we don't know everything about the new season, but we do know that the first of many books in this season will have the rules for a new Warhammer 40k game mode called boarding actions which is not necessarily a sex crime even if it is the name of one people are gonna say that this is just like a pirate thing because it's all about spaceships but let me tell you pirates were involved in a lot of sex crimes most of them homoerotic so next time you hear games workshop say the term boarding action think gay pirate sex crime the more you know Seriously, Caribbean piracy was all about rum, sodomy, and ethnically diverse anarcho-syndicalism. God, the new blood and plunder starter box can't come soon enough. And this new sex crime mode takes place on Space Hulks, like the current season of Kill Team, which also takes place uh, on a Space Hulk, which will be relevant later. And as the games take place on Space Hulks, well, we're going to be playing in the geography of Space Hulks. I feel like I've said the word Space Hulks like more times in the last two seconds than in my entire life. And this means that the maps for this game mode will be filled with tight corridors, walled rooms, sharp turns, and no real line of sight beyond a couple of inches. Good luck with your battles against the world eaters, toy players. And to say that I'm skeptical of the gameplay opportunities that dungeon tiles and small rooms can reflect in Warhammer 40k is a bit of an understatement. This game mode once again cements Games Workshop's goal of making Warhammer be the every game because it's not important that Warhammer 40k just be good at representing competitive army battles on the table. But now they also have to cover narrative rules, casual rules, and even internal ship combat. But to give Games Workshop a little bit of credit, these pirate sex crime games are designed to be played at roughly 500 points. So very small games of Warhammer are being pushed by Games Workshop with this next season book. Such an initiative is one that I applaud because I'm all about accessible content and making wargaming as easy to get onto the table and to play as possible. Something which isn't always true. There's a lot of barriers to entry with wargaming. Look, we're playing miniature war games, and that can include a lot of math and logical deduction. We're the big brains, really. We're playing tactical puzzle games here. And I've been pretty open about this. I suck at the big brain stuff, especially maths and puzzles. It's why I can't play Blood Bowl. It requires the biggest of brains. That's why I was so pleased when Brilliant reached out to me and asked to sponsor this video. Brilliant is a website that has thousands of lessons and is really the best way to learn math, science, and computer science using interactive learning, which is something personally I found far, far more engaging than simply reading texts. It's like moving from an I go, you go system to alternating activation. It's a revelation, let me tell you. There's new content added every single month from courses on mathematical thinking to 
biological lessons. And it means that I can take half an hour on Brilliant each morning just built into my routine and take a few lessons and feel like I'm learning a lot. And these lessons are applicable not only for wargaming but life in general. There's basic foundational lessons for people like me but also college level content as well and you can work your way up the levels. And I feel like I'm climbing it. It's really cool. Honestly, I feel like I can actually read a Warhammer data sheet now without going cross-eyed. So that's good. Become the tactical marine. Solve any problem except for your own obsolescence. To get started for free today, visit brilliant.org slash discourse managers. There is a link in the description of this video. Get started for free and the first 200 people to use that link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go get it guys and thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. <coughs> uh, sorry there everybody, I just had a sudden case of needing to pay for warmth this winter. Which is actually a really relevant thing to bring up in the context of this new Warhammer season. See, as much as the game mode only requires 500 points of Warhammer models to play with, unfortunately you're also going to need to buy new terrain to play on. A lot of new terrain. You think Space Hulks just lay themselves out onto your table by themselves? Not on your life, sonny. I'm afraid to say your table is going to need to get decked out with a bit of elbow grease, a lucky inheritance, and hundreds of dollars of Games Workshop's trademarked plastic bits that cost a couple of dollars, if that, to make, but will retail for 100 times that amount. Yeah, this season is using special bespoke terrain. Two kill team boxes worth of terrain, in fact. See, I, I told you it would be relevant later. So basically, you get the walls and doors from the Into the Dark kill team box, and then you get the walls and doors from the Shadow Vault box, and you smoosh them together. And ta-da! <laughs> it's a Warhammer table now. Of course, if you don't want to buy two massive kill team boxes, which why the hell wouldn't you want to do that? Kill Team is, after all, a middling skirmish war game that is ki kind of fun. K kinda? You can instead buy the terrain separately in a big box that we don't know the price of just yet, but I would recommend clenching your sphincter in anticipation. The Dark Uprising terrain was 110 pounds a couple of years back, so it's anyone's guess how much this'll be. GW are also taking the wholesome opportunity to sell novelty bases too that fit in thematically with this season. And the reason for the season is a breezing on by. It's genius, really. So many new products to sell for so much money. We've got to have money. And Games Workshop love an excuse to sell product. After all, their favorite day of the year is Warhammer Day. And, and, and why did they enjoy that day? Mr. Merritt described Games Day to the jury as a Games Workshop event that allowed customers to perform their, quote, favorite hobby activity, buying things from Games Workshop. Quoting Alan Merritt, Games Workshop's head of IP. Yes, that is the season model. This is Ark of Omens. This season really is turning Warhammer 40k into an even more incredibly expensive, super tree and heavy series to keep up with. Ark of Omen tables are going to be dense and new. Very important with that one. No one who plays Warhammer 40k has this terrain yet. It's asking every single player to put their hand in their pocket and pay up. Which means cha ching cha ching cha ching for Games Workshop. From that ever dwindling number of people who could possibly keep up with the expenditure required to play up to date Warhammer 40k. So then, the question becomes, do I want to keep my house for a few days? Or buy a whole table's worth of terrain again? Because none of my current terrain will do. And these decisions, by the by, are getting a lot harder now that the oceans have turned black and the dark times have come. And I don't know if Games Workshop really care. I think they're happy to leave people behind, so long as enough people buy this new terrain. On that terrain, by the way, watch out if you've got any interest in purchasing it. It's a massive trap. It's built very weirdly. It's not quite fit for purpose. I suggest you check out Glass Half Full. He did a video on this, which I've link to in the description of this video, but the long and short of it is, you can't prime the Space Hulk terrain on the sprue. If you do that, then the connectors won't fit into the little slots that they're meant to go into. With just a smidge of primer, you're gonna cause yourself a hell of a ton of headaches. Because you know, 
Games Workshop could never have foreseen this. It's just long, flat terrain on a sprue. People never prime that sort of stuff. So watch out for that and have fun. Just more of that Games Workshop premium quality that you'll pay through the nose for. And a lot of this is really ingenious because we are so far beyond the statement, if you don't like it, don't buy it. Which, by the way, that's a meaningless statement that serves only corporate actors that normalize predatory behaviors and every single time someone says those words, it leads us further down the path to a much more aggressively monetized tabletop hobby space in favor of... Uh, <sighs> sh shareholder dividends? I, g I guess? Is that, is that good? Probably not. Because this time, we have no choice whether to buy this or not. This is so far beyond special rules for plants or imagining a can of beer as a cooling tower. This is the geography of a table. To play the newest game mode is impossible without the new terrain to represent the labyrinthine nature of a space hulk. You got your table of terrain sorted already? Well, not for this game mode, you don't. Has your club got tons of tables for Warhammer 40k out already? Not for this game mode, they don't. You must be this tall to enter. You must have purchased this terrain to play. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a battle pass. This was one of my original worries about what the season obsession would do to Games Workshop. It's not enough that they are busy popularizing predatory box sets in this hobby under the guise of the new army boxes, but they are now also co-opting the language of big budget AAA video games in order to describe their high pressure sales tactics requiring hobbyists to buy this specific terrain in order to fit in and play the game that you have already spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on. And make no mistake, this will segregate the community. Not everyone will be able to afford to buy into this. And that's a big, big problem for Warhammer 40k. One that I think Games Workshop have either totally missed or just don't care. Okay, look, let's take off the clown nose, pop our balloons, and slither back into the and get a little serious here. Warhammer 40k is an okay game. I play it and I occasionally enjoy it when I do. But one of the main strengths that it has and the reason why so many people do play Warhammer 40k is that everyone plays it. No matter where you go, you can get a game of Warhammer. It's just like the theme song of Cheers. If you're a Warhammer 40k player, when you enter a game store, everyone knows your name or, or something. It, it's a shared language. You're guaranteed to get in a game of Warhammer 40k. You can try that with Gates of Antares and see how far you get. This is one of the main reasons that Warhammer is popular. It's a self-perpetuating cycle. This whole season thing mixes that up and it separates out the player base even further and they already are. Another game mode, distinct from narrative, competitive, battle forged, who knows what else? Now we have pirate sex crimes as well. It's going to get messy and confusing for new players much like real life pirate sex crimes. It's similar to how Magic the Gathering has commander mode, modern mode, legacy mode. The player base is split in all these different directions, but Magic the Gathering has a much larger community of players than Warhammer 40k. Do we really want to split up the player base? And then six months down the line, what's going to be next? This is only the first book of the Ark of Omens. Well, we don't know, but I will point this out. The first Ark of Omens book uses the terrain of two kill team boxes. That's half the size of a regular Warhammer 40K board. That means that four kill team boxes smooshed together would get a full Warhammer 40k board size. And how many kill team boxes are coming out with this 
Space Hulk style of terrain? Four. So this suggests to me that a later book in the Ark of Omen season will require a full table of this terrain. Because how else do you escalate the season otherwise? We are just at the beginning here. It has only begun. And then after that, well, maybe a whole new game mode, which necessitates even more new terrain and further segregates out the player base so that we can start this cycle all over again. That's the beauty of the season model. You know, that or 10th edition will come out immediately after Ark of Omens and render all of this irrelevant. And you'll be so happy that you spent all that money. Spending money is the only thing that fills me for even a second. That or gay pirate sex crimes. And here's the really, really ingenious bit. This isn't just Warhammer 40k. Kill Team is currently in a Space Hulk season at the minute. The Gallo Dark season. Age of Sigmar is in a Beastlands of Gur season. And Warcry is in a Beast World season, in a big forest of Lizardman stuff. And Warhammer Underworld is following suit, it's also in a Beast World season. And all of these things, aside from sharing terrain and thematic elements, are defined as objects of transience. These seasons will change. They are designed to be a part of a hype cycle that will continue forever. And every single game line is getting it. Every single one. I hope that the Warhammer player base are collectively ready to buy hundreds of dollars of new terrain every six months if they want to play the most up-to-date game mode on top of the books required, on top of the miniatures required. This isn't very far-fetched. Kill Team, Warcry, both those game modes already undergo this. Now it's come for Warhammer 40k. And depressingly, there are so many people in this hobby that will celebrate this raising of the barrier to entry. They will thank Games Workshop for creating more content. Doesn't have to be this way. Only Games Workshop could create a game mode designed around smaller scale games and make it more expensive. So yeah, I'm feeling kind of vindicated a little bit here when I warned everybody back in January. It really didn't take long for Games Workshop to demonstrate one of the major pitfalls of the season model obsession that they have. By the way, I'm just reminding everybody that plastic sprues are incredibly cheap to make and these are toys and should be more affordable. And if you're wondering why Games Workshop are suddenly so obsessed with seasons, check out this video here. And a huge thanks to my patrons, especially Sonic Bread. Thank you so much, everybody, and I'll catch you next time. Bye bye